the outer sleeve slides upwards and the phone itself is on display front and center unfolded standing proud in a dedicated cradle now it's worth noting it ships with this protective slip over the screen which almost just pops off the front you just fold the phone slightly and pull it off with the phone to one side we get to look at the rest of the stuff in the box too and being different again they all ship in this neatly designed case that looks almost like a glasses case inside you get the turbo power adapter which delivers 15 watts of power that might not seem like much but the phone's battery is a relatively small 2800 milliamp hours there are earphones too which feature wide cone shaped tips and in-ear fins giving them a bit more of a high-end feel and of course there's a usb cable but now the important part the phone now not a massive amount has changed from the last model it looks very similar it features the same resolution 2.7 inch display on the front and the same 6.2 inch plastic oled display on the inside the hinge design is slightly different in appearance but then the method of folding it is the same and when open there's still a subtle crease across the middle of the display oh and the hinge doesn't make a sound when you open the latest device we've been keeping an ear out to ensure there are no scrunching sounds audible unlike the first generation folded shut it still forms this really neat little compact design which easily fits in the palm the one physical difference to note is that instead of having a fingerprint sensor built into the chin on the front it's got one on the back of the phone which is still slightly an awkward position but it means the chin is more gently tapered also the camera on the outside is redesigned to make it look more seamless and now features a bigger 48 megapixel samsung sensor and that should mean better photos than the predecessor plus there's a second camera inside the quick view display on the outside is nifty you can interact with it loading apps up and then flipping open to continue on the main screen when needed internally it's powered by the snapdragon 765 chip which while not flagship is certainly powerful enough to keep things running smoothly and it's joined by 8 gigabytes of ram and a generous 256 gigabytes of storage that 700 series chip is the same one that's used inside the speedy oneplus nord and has enabled motorola to build in 5g support into this phone and that means much faster data speeds and less latency in areas with 5g coverage in essence the new razor takes the idea from last year's reboot and just makes it more relevant to 2020 it certainly seems to have fewer downfalls on first impressions and i'll see you again in the next one